So what's the plan for the passage to Roscoff tomorrow? Uh, have you checked the weather? Light southerlies. If it's light southerlies, we'll just get the code zero up and just, it's 30 miles. I don't think we can really leave till about lunchtime. And I think we'll probably be punching tide for a couple of hours. If you're making three and a half, four knots, right, we'll still be able to kind of, you know, put it down there. If and what we... time does the tide turn? I think it's about 1.50. Oh, okay. So we should have like, an hour and a half of, of foul tide and then slack yeah. and then... Yeah, then we'll get them all yeah. hurtling around so there to Roscoff. That's yeah. fine. Yeah, there you go. Good morning, everyone. We are in a little place called Labarack and today we are heading to Roscoff, I think. We're not crossing the channel today, are we? It's only, what, about 30 miles away? and we've got some beautiful weather for it nice warm southerlies bright blue skies so i think we'll take advantage and uh just enjoy the cell one of our last cells in france actually that said we have some really nice places to go to in the next week so mm -hmm. i am excited i think we're going to end on a real high note well i'm going to start getting this boat ready all right then so what do you need to do to get the boat ready oh i've got to wake up first um We've got half a tank of water. You need to just check the instruments. We need to get um, get the mainsail out. Just get everything checked and gone. Well, according to our tidal calculations, we're not going to get fair tide until after probably about one o'clock. It's only about ten thirty now, but I think we're both like, ready to go. <laughs> so we might end up punching tide for an hour or full. Yeah, a couple of hours really. It's not in our nature to just like wait around all morning not going. We'll still be making progress, so probably best to get going. It's nice and warm today. That sun is lovely. We've got a southerly breeze for once, so it's a nice warm, warm breeze. So you want to get going early then? I don't see any point in not. Even if the punch tide, we'll still make four knots. Yeah. Making four knots, you know, for three extra hours gives us 12 miles. It's a half the way, it's halfway there. Yeah. So I'd rather get in slower but earlier. Yeah, I agree. So simultaneous release, reverse out, reverse round the corner. Are we going to reverse? We're not going to skip the boat round. No, there's no point. It's quite tight. Yeah. And the thing is, all the while we're trying to move the boat round through 180 degrees, um, she's being pushed over. So we've probably got 20 meters in a 12 meter boat. I also know that as soon as the wind catches this boat, she'll get pushed further on. Yeah, and you won't so, be able to bring the bow around. Yeah, we're not going to get the bow around as quickly as I'd like to. second pair of eyes in case there's a boat coming out that I can't see. <laughs> Bye! Bye. <laughs> Whoever that was that called us up. Where are we? Labarack. If you're watching this video, comment down below. <laughs> Had a couple call out to us as we were leaving the marina in Lamarack. I'm sorry that all we could do is wave. Right, so there's two boats in front, there's a red cardinal mark, the red uh, marker boy there. this I think. Wind on the beam? Yeah perfect. We'll get out of the river and then we'll um, head downwind. 
Yeah, it will be. No, it will be on the beam. Pretty cool. Hopefully, back on the beam actually. So spring tides. It's uh, it's a big spring tide actually, and we're going out almost exactly at low water. Which means, one, the chop is a little bit greater than it would normally be because uh, it's near the bottom. We still have uh, almost 20 meters underneath us, but literally if you go 10 meters that way, you're down to one meter. It's a pretty narrow channel, so we've got to be right in the, in the, in the thick of it. As soon as we get out of here, we'll uh, head, head east for Roscoff. And uh, yeah, we've got a uh, oh, downwind sail today, another downwind sail. Getting, uh, we're going to get used to this downwind sailing malarkey rather than beating up wind. Well, the, you know, it's more pleasant in the cockpit. You have, you know, you're not getting buffeted. And to tell you the truth, the last couple of ten sails to windward have been northerlies. So, uh, you know, they're cold as well. You see, the deceptive thing is that it looks, to all intent and purpose, as if all we have in front of us is just wide open sea, but we don't. And there's a few things I want to point out to you. There, I'm sure you can see it, and also there, there's a disturbance in the water. And normally, when you get a wave that tends to be in one place that does not move and reappears, there's something below the surface. So, when we're in rocky areas, we're always looking for disturbed water, and um, we should hopefully be out of this channel in how far? Skipper? Half a mile. There you go, half a mile, and we should be out of this channel and onward with our day. We definitely have some tide against us because we're only doing about three and a half knots, inching up to four knots every now and again. But oh well, doesn't matter. It's a beautiful day, isn't it, Nick? Lovely day. Gorgeous day. Big swell. Big swell day. Yeah, that swell. It's calmed down a bit now, actually. Real Atlantic swell. This. It actually feels really nice. Got the sun shining. Got loads of boats out and about. It's quite warm for a change. Lots of seagulls and. Beautiful scenery to look at. Lovely fluffy clouds. Get it deep in thought, babe. To the ocean, my love. Yes, yeah, mesmerizing, isn't it? And a couple of nice sails in a row now. Long may that continue. As I said, you know, we knew we were going to punch tide. Yeah. You know, if we can get eight miles, ten miles down the coast, that's a third of the way we need to get to Roscoff. So, you know, we're in two hours earlier. Yeah. I think within two hours it should have turned. Yeah. And then, you know, we'll just pick up tide. Nick has to uh, swap the cards over, the chart, the electronic chart cards. God. Because we realise that we've we run out in about three miles. So yeah, if there's anywhere in the world that you definitely want electronic charts, we have paper charts, but you definitely want electronic charts, it's around here. We good? Yeah. So it seems to have calmed down fractionally, um, but we're definitely punching quite a bit of tide at the moment. We're only doing about two and a half knots. You can go through here, but you can go through there or go around. Uh, we went through last time, do you remember? Did we? Yeah. Is that the terrifying thing? Yeah. There is a um, there is a channel through. It wasn't that terrifying. We've got a lot more experience now. It's three and a half knots of tide though today. It's up to you. I know that is an anchorage, so it can't be that impossible to get through. Alright, we'll see. And there's there's point one of a metre there, babe. I think you have to go through there at high water. Mm. Okay, well, that's probably not going to happen. High water's not till 8 o'clock tonight. Yeah, yeah, it's not going to happen, thank you. Now, Nick, what's the three masted sailing vessel called? Oh, I don't know, schooner? What has one mast? A sloop. Sloop, catch, <laughs> or yawl. 
schooner. Uh, yeah, maybe. I don't know. Let me just check. We're going to get all the comments anyway. That's a schooner. A schooner, okay. Well done. Three mast schooner. It's a schooner because it's got two or more masts where the foremast is shorter than the main mast. Right. Okay. It's a three mast schooner. There's a life I lead in this city Hurry and to cut my teeth Quick little update for you. We've uh, finally got a little bit of current with us, but of course, the very moment that we start to get some favorable tide, uh, the wind spins around and we're, like, it's basically, well, it's what, 40, 50 degrees at the moment. So we're sailing into the wind at the moment, which slowed us down. So we weren't really making much progress. Partly because we put our waypoint at the north of Il de Bats because we didn't want to go through the channel. Remember doing that last time? When I say last time, I do mean like eight, nine years ago. No, seven, eight years ago, anyway. And I remember it being like really quite challenging. Although I wasn't the one that won at the helm, but I certainly remember feeling quite stressed out. Uh, so we decided not to do that this time. We were just gonna go around the island, um, but as the hour, hours have ticked by and the afternoon has kind of continued to slip by, it's quarter past four already, and uh, we're looking at an arrival time after the marina actually closes, which is, is less than ideal. Because it's not a marina we're familiar with, it's not a marina that's in the book because it's new, and we'd rather get there within office hours so they can direct us to a berth and, and we can just get ourselves settled in. So we've decided to go through the, it's called the Chanel de Bats. Anyone watching this video who's familiar with these waters will probably appreciate our hesitation but hopefully we are as always worrying about nothing and it'll all be totally fine. The book says that you can go above half Tired. When do we reckon? What stage of tide do you reckon we'll get there? About half, about half tide, coming into half tide. So at least we're on a rising tide. I'll show you the uh, the channel now. It gets pretty narrow and pretty shallow at times. But hey, look, we've done it once before. We can do it again. So we're aiming for here. We were going to go all the way around and then into Roscoff Marina, which is in here. But now we're going to take the shortcut between. The island, which is Ildabats, and the mainland. So you can see it's all pretty straightforward here. It's buoyed. There is an anchorage there. And then it gets a little bit shallow around here. I mean, it's 0.1 above Dayton right there. So obviously we'll need a little bit more water than that. Yeah, pretty shallow. Are you feeling okay about it? Well, the astronomical low today is 1.7. So we should be 1.7 above chart datum. So that should give us at least 1.8. Yeah. So that should take point three off for a high pressure system. We just need a we need a meter. What we're going to do is we're going to go in with the sails down, yeah. just under engine, yeah, and the keel up three with three uh, up with the uh, three notches up, yeah? yeah. So we know that three notches we go ground at one one. And you're helming. I don't know exactly how many miles it takes off, but I reckon it takes at least five miles off. So that's an hour. There's an anchorage there. So if it's like, oh, we're not going to make this. Yeah. And we can't get back out because the tide's pissing through. Yeah, yeah. We'll have to just drop the hook. So we'll go in with the sails down and the anchor ready to deploy. Okay. Yeah, we just hit, yeah, seven, seven point four. Yeah, we definitely, we finally, finally at long last, we got the tide with us. How are we looking? Yep.
It's like wind has come around from the north now and it is cold. This coastline is just so absurdly beautiful. I don't know if you, the camera really picks up particularly well, but there are just like rocks strewn all along the entire coastline. You can't get close to the actual beaches because there's just rocks everywhere. That might not sound beautiful as I describe it, but it, it just looks absolutely spectacular. It's very, it's very distinctive, isn't it? This very rocky kind of wild coastline. It's, um, it's very distinctively North Brittany and it is lovely. You okay? Yeah, I'm just trying to find the next boy. Uh, that North Wizzy. There. Sunny, isn't and it? Treacherous. And treacherous, yeah. Well, there's a metaphor in that, babe. I like my naval pastures like I like my women. <laughs> beautiful and treacherous. I'm not sure if I fit that description. You're definitely beautiful. <laughs> this looks like an interesting island. Yeah, that's Roscoff right there. Gee, Roscoff looks lovely, doesn't it? Beautiful. Last time we were along this coast, we we're sailing along this coast, um, the, the, there were literally two options if you wanted to come to Roscoff. Either this very, very rolly acreage behind us, or the uh, old fishing harbour, which wasn't really for, for sailing boats, it was just for fishing boats. But now they have a brand new marina just around the corner, so that's where we're going. Can't wait to go explore Roscoff tomorrow. All right, heading into the marina now. We'll see you when we get in. All right, we made it in. Nick's fighting with the sail bag, as per usual. It's like the standard like routine, post-sail routine. And uh, so far, so good. First impressions are very positive. We had an English couple call out a greeting to us as we motored past them in the marina. We had a French man come and take our lines. And then I had a German man come and help me with the uh, electricity pedestal. So very friendly welcome. So far, I'm gonna go check in. I've got about 3% battery left in the camera, so I reckon that's a wrap for today. Thank you so much for coming sailing with us today. I hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. <laughs> Leave a comment down below. We'll see you next week. <sighs> Tell you what, it's been a bit stressful for the last few days yeah. because the France numbers are just going up and up and up and up. The British government have just changed, or the Jersey government, yeah. just changed the legislation for France. You're now on an amber list, so you have to do five days of isolation. And I'm like, brilliant. Covid is still raging in Europe and this directly affects us. Lamy, it's all getting a bit complicated. So now we're off to explore a little bit of Roscoff, a little bit of this beautiful North Britannic port. Time to go and see Roscoff. I hope you enjoy this. Charming, isn't it? Yeah. Lovely little fish in the